Hi everyone, welcome to another video. We're looking once again at a pretty new concept today. We are looking at bivariate data and scatter plots. So these are a different type of data. But first we want to break down, before we go into any examples, we want to break down this word bivariate. Because a lot of the time when we see something for the first time, we want to make sense of it. Now there's two parts that make up this word, bi, that means two. So you may remember this from other topics, for example, binomial, we had two numbers or two terms. And the next one here is variate. Now, what does this word look like and sound like? It sounds like the word variable. So, when we look at bivariate data in this video, we are looking at any type of data that shows two variables. Now, believe it or not, we actually looked at this in the previous video. When we looked at our time series graphs, we had time, which changed, it's a variable, and for example, something like temperature, which changed. This is an example of bivariate data. So, let's just write down the definition quickly. Bivariate data. This is, this includes data with two variables, and these two variables are usually related. For example, we have maybe height and weight. So typically, if people are taller, they're going to weigh more. So these two variables that we're gonna be looking at with these pieces of data are going to relate in some way. And the next word is something that we haven't really seen too much of, scatter plots. So we're going to define what those are and we're going to be drawing up some later on. So we also have scatter plots. And what these are, um, they're basically, these are graphs on a number plane. So similar to what we looked at in the previous video. These are graphs on a number plane um, in which the axes correspond to the variables. So axes correspond to our two variables. And we're going to be plotting points on these. So the reason we call them scatter plots is that when we draw our points, we can say the points are scattered on the plane. So the points are scattered on the plane. And here we have our first variable, call that variable one, and then we have our next variable on the y-axis. So the scatter plots we look at are going to look like this. Now for the rest of the video, we're going to be talking about a pretty key idea before we get into any types of examples. We want to, when looking at these scatter plots, one thing, as we said in the last video, the point of statistics is to look at data, whether it's on a, expressed on a plane or in any other way, and we're trying to make some conclusion about what we're seeing. We're trying to pull out information. And we want to investigate the word correlation. Because when we look at these two variables, we want to see how are they related. Are the variables related? So in looking at correlation, we're going to be talking about, well, how do they relate? Is there a relationship between them? Is there some kind of trend 
between the two variables. For example, as one goes up, does the other go down? And to what extent? Now, further on from this, we're gonna look at a bunch of different types of scatter plots in just a minute. And we're gonna have a think about how these, whether we can make any conclusions about these. Now, the first one is gonna be something like this. Now, let's look at the exact same, um, let's look at the exact same variables we talked about before. Let's look at, for example, um, I don't know, in one case, we'll look at temperature and let's say um, time. So let's say in one particular month, we measured the temperature each day and we got something that looked like this. Okay, so based on the information we have here, is there any conclusion we can make about the temperature with time? We wanna see what is the relationship? Well, it doesn't really look like there is one. These points just look randomly scattered all over the place. So we can't really say anything about how the temperature in this case is related to the time because we can't say, for example, okay, as time goes up, the temperature goes up because we have a couple of just random contradicting things. And the same way, we can't really say that, okay, as the, um, as the time gets bigger, the temperature decreases because we have these kind of points up here. So anytime our data is really scattered along here, there is really no actual relationship between my variables of temperature and time. So here we're gonna say that anytime there is a random scatter, there is no correlation. There is no trend or relationship that we can identify between how the time and the temperature changes. Let's look at a slightly different one. So, and I'll use, I'll use different variables each time. Let's use, for example, um, we'll do the, um, the share price idea from the previous video. And we have time over here. Okay, and now let's say that we have something that looks kind of like this. Okay, first of all, what are some initial things we notice when comparing to this data above? Well, they're not as randomly scattered, are they? They look like they're sort of funneling in to a little section here. And we can kind of see that they, they appear as though they're slightly more linear than the example above. There's no linearity here. It's just random points scattered all over the place. But here we can kind of see and make a connection that as the time gets bigger, so as time passes, so as we move from the left-hand side of the axis, the horizontal axis to the right-hand side, my time is increasing. And I can see that while this is happening, my points, my share price is falling. So from up here, our price starts really high and it drops down as time passes. So let's look at a couple of points that confirm this. These three points, for example, show that when my time is big, when my time is high, my share price is low. Whereas these two points show that when my time is lower, sort of on this end of the horizontal axis, my share price is actually quite high. It's sitting really up here. So there is a more linear relationship between my two variables here, but it's still not very strong. So we can say that there is a weak correlation. And this is where what we've learned from linear relationships kind of carries over. Because we notice that as we, whoops, 
as we have, as we've drawn in all of these points, we can kind of see if we were to draw a line through these, then we can see that there's a pretty clear slope. So we can pretty clearly see that we've got this type of relationship happening. As one goes, as my time gets bigger, my share price goes down. Now, if this was a regular line, it would have a negative gradient. So if we look from left to right, this is decreasing. And this type of directionality gets included in our descriptions of this data. So while this is a weak correlation, we can also say it is a negative correlation. It has a negative gradient. So as my time gets bigger, my share price gets smaller. Now let's look at one more example. Now let's look at, for example, height and weight. So what if we drew another set of points? Okay, what do we see here? Well, we see compared to the previous example and definitely compared to the one before that, we see these points are now far more packed in. And they literally resemble, they look like they are sitting on a straight line. This is that linearity we talked about in the previous video. So I could sort of draw a line through and I can very clearly see that there is a very linear relationship between the two variables. So the more linear our data looks, the more we can mention it's the correlation that's happening. So I can see here that pretty clearly as my height gets bigger, so as we go in the positive direction of my horizontal axis, my weight is very big. You can see this point lines up to very high up on my vertical axis. And say down here, when my height is lower, my weight is lower. And the more linear this is, the more of a trend we can observe. We can pretty clearly see here that, yeah, as the height's getting bigger, the weight is getting bigger. And this line has a positive gradient. So what can we say about this? Well, we can say based on this data, there is a strong correlation. Why is it strong? Because it is resembling a straight line. My data points are packed in a lot more compared to over here. They're still kind of packed in and represent a line, but it's a lot more clear down here. So we can say that there is a very strong correlation we can make between height and weight in that as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. And the more linear a line is, the more the dots look like they're sitting on a straight line, the stronger the correlation. So this is a strong correlation. And as we said, by the gradient, this is going to be a positive correlation. So as one thing goes up, the other goes up, as opposed to up here, where as one went up, the other went down, leading to a negative gradient or a negative correlation. Okay, now one more thing before we end the video, because in the next video, we'll talk about some applications of practice questions. In statistics, we have often talked about outliers. So we want to see if we can identify them on a, on a graph, on one of these scatter plots. So in the context of what we're looking at here, let's see our trend up here. We're looking at our positive sort of, um, our strong positive correlation here. What if we had a data point that was down here? Well, this guy here is clearly different to my other points on the line. This is like an anomaly. This is some kind of 
person, for example here, that's really tall, but weighs very little. And in the context of statistics, we talked about outliers as being very different from the rest. And this can even be shown on these scatter plots because everyone here follows a clear trend. Our outlier does not sit on that trend. So we can say here that this guy here is my outlier. A more formal definition of this is that our outliers on our scatter plots, um, they are clearly identified as a data point that is isolated from the rest of the data. rest of the data. And the more linear my data looks, the stronger the correlation, the easier it is to identify an outlier. Because especially with this example, everyone's packed in in this little orange line of high, this, sorry, purple line, pink line I've highlighted. The outlier sits outside of that. And that's a lot more obvious with a strong correlation than no correlation. Who's to say that this person's an outlier or this person is or this person is? The data is too scattered to determine whether an outlier actually exists. So the more linear a scatter plot looks, the stronger the correlation, the easier it is to identify an outlier. So that brings us to the end of the video. We will look at some worked examples in the following video and learn how to construct these scatter plots and take information from those. But thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.